Hey guys, welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm going to be painting on this little four by four canvas panel. It has been coated with uh, white, Prussian blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna. I did this in my previous video where I did the daisies. This was the background that I had made, so I'm gonna use it. I think to make a little water lily garden, we're going to try it. I'm going to see. This is part of my hashtag small nature art challenge or small art challenge 2022. I think I'm going to need a touch of the Prussian blue, white, burnt sienna because I like to add that to my green. I need some green and maybe a light green, a little bit of yellow magenta now this is all acrylic gouache so that means that it's an acrylic binder with the pigments in it and it dries velvety smooth matte so it's not shiny look at this it is not a shiny surface see it's not like i'm i'm faking it here we've got shiny here and not shiny there so i'm going to start putting out my paints and then we're going to get painting. I'm using just whatever brushes I happen to have around. So, you know, don't don't be thinking you have to be limited by what brushes you use. I do have a little water sprayer bottle here that I can uh, just spray my paint with. It's a light misting type of bottle. It's very warm here. Very unseasonably warm here. <laughs> filberty brush here. I think this filbert brush, this is an artist loft fundamentals. It came in a giant pack of brushes for super cheap. I have two cups, two containers of water. I have this one and this one. So when I'm just wetting my brush to start off with, I'm just dipping it in the clean water jar. And then when I'm rinsing my brush, I'm going to rinse it in the dirty water jar. I want to go in and first add a little bit of some of this blue and white, a lot of white, touch of blue, to get some highlights in the water before I go in and put my water lilies over the top. So you see, I just put a touch of blue in that and I'm just going to put little dabs and I'm letting the paint kind of just do its own thing. Most of this is, you know, most of these uh, dabs are going to get covered anyway. This is very similar to like um, Claude Monet where he would do dabs and daubs and you end up with this beautiful abstracty type of painting. I'm going to soften these out a little bit with just some water now. I don't want them to be quite so so strong. And when it's still dry, uh, wet, you can do this. Once it's dry, you can't move this paint around. So kind of be thoughtful. But remember, this is a beginner painting. So you can do whatever makes you happy. Okay, that really looks like a rough, rough uh, sea, doesn't it? I think I'm going to uh, get the paint off my brush there. I'm gonna take a little bit of that darker blue and kind of add some touches of that back in now. Painting is all about layers, especially acrylic painting. Acrylic painting, or gouache painting is all about the layers. So just add your layers. And remember, you can always add more layers. If you don't like something, you can paint over it. If you really like it, try and not paint over it, but don't be too precious about it. If it ends up getting painted over and you didn't want it to be painted over, probably the universe saying, hey, there's something better that you can do. I am starting to like that. I need just a touch of water on that wet paint. 
Ooh, look at the depth we're getting here. The... That's so cool. Now we're getting this lovely watery ground background for our lilies to go on. There we go. I'm going to dry it really quick. I'm just using a heat, heat craft tool. You can just let it air dry if you want to, but I'm going to try and get this done in real time really quick. Super quick and easy. How to get some lily pads in. I'm going to get some darker green lily pads in. Look at that lily pad. This rounded brush rounded end on it you can just set it down and pull it across and lift look at that i want to get some layers of color in here so i'm going to grab a little bit of the mid green now uh light and i'm going to add a bit of that in go back to my dark green Maybe touch of yellow. Ooh, get some light on those. The only thing that you want is for your lily pads to be opaque. You don't want them to be transparent. So be careful on how much water you're adding to your brush and make sure you have enough paint so that it covers completely. If you end up with it not covering, you can go back and add a little bit more paint again. I think I'm going to put a touch of blue and maybe even pick up some of that white. Ooh. Just want to spark it up here and there. It's all about layers. It's all about playing and exploring. Get some, ooh, some variation of tone. I'm not too worried about making these big and little and, and perspective and in any of that. It's very abstract. I'm getting lots of different colors on my brush now so I can just sort of dab in all these different little guys. I might take my brush side. No, let's see, not enough water on there. See, that's what happens, not enough water. There we go. I'm gonna let some of them lay over others. The flowers are going to be on top. So this is really just an abstract background just have fun with it. I am just going and just dabbing in to the paint, just sort of randomly picking up paint. You do want to leave some of your water showing. <laughs> I'm trying to remind myself, leave some water showing. But this is just mush down the brush and pick it up. Mush down and pick it up. I like that. I like how there's a couple minty colored ones in there too. That's interesting. You're the one in control of your painting. You're the one in control of your design. This is one of those lessons that I do mine, you do yours, and although we are going to have similar looking paintings, it would be really hard for you to get one to look exactly like mine, and I could never get one to look exactly <laughs> like yours, because we all have our own hand, we all have our own eye for where the color is going, I like that. I really like that one that's bright yellow. 
I'm going to put my magenta, no, actually, I'm going to go ahead and dry real quick. Actually, let's see, what do I see here? What do I see? I see, I'm looking in a, in a monitor now. I see a space over here. I want a little bit more green, but maybe kind of dark. Touch of that burnt sienna. And I want to kind of darken up that space right there. Sometimes you get too many on here and it's good to go back in with dark so you can take a little bit of light over the top of it. So I'm just kind of picking and choosing here where I'm going. I want a little bit more dark there. And then I'm going to grab some light. And I'm going to put some light right over it. Maybe a little bit more light right here. Just touching with a little bit of light. Yeah, I like that. I like that I got some of that yellow moving around through here now. Doesn't have to all be as strong as that one. Just getting it moving around. A little bit more light. Now, I don't have to paint a whole, a whole lily pad. I could just go on here and get just a tiny edge of it. What I'm doing now is kind of giving things variation. I've got a really, you know, a brush with a lot of different colors on it. So I can tap in some variation just on an edge, like giving it light on a highlight. All right. I want to stop that. Don't need to go any farther with that. Let's show you what the top down looks like. I'm going to dry it really quick, put out my, my magenta. Ooh, that was a lot more magenta than I needed, but that's okay. And to start off with, I'm going to grab some touch of Prussian blue. And the magenta. Make kind of a deep purpley magenta color. And then add just a tiny bit of white so I get variation in it. I'm going to take my brush up on its edge and we're going to go and do kind of blop, blop, blop. Very abstract. Grab a little bit more white to it. Kind of keep the white on one edge of it, maybe. Ooh, kind of keep the white on one edge. We're gonna plop. Look at that. Wow. Make sure you have enough water on your brush that your paint flows. I'm going to grab just another touch of that Prussian blue and this mixing magenta. Yummy. 
Okay, so now see my brush is really dirty, not dirty, but really not totally mixed. I'm gonna make a another flower right here. See how it just gives you that that feeling of of lots of petals without Oh, I love this. I love this. Let's see. 3 5 we're going to go a little bit smaller as we go back here. Kind of just tapping and getting a little bit of some variation. My brush is kind of, my brush is kind of um, pushing apart a little bit. See how it's not all held together really tight? I'm using that to make these sort of wild little petals way out there. Let's grab a bit more white and that pinky purple, a little more pink. And what I'm doing basically is doing like five or six dabs going across the back. And then I'm doing a couple short, short dabs in the front of the, of the flower. So just put a little bit of white onto that so you can see it a little better. And some, sometimes you actually see a little bit of yellow in them. I might put a little yellow in. I think I want to take a bit more of that pink and just sort of go boom, 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 boom. Let the brush do some of the work. And if you don't work it too much, then it feels more real. Very strange how that works, eh? One, two, three, four, five, six. I need there. Just let the brush, let the brush kind of do its thing. Very abstract. I'm going to grab some of that blue and a little bit more of the the magenta. And darken that up. Right now it doesn't look very good. Don't worry. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing and experimenting. So, you know, don't worry. Sometimes you just have to experiment. And sometimes those experiments become the coolest bit of your, the coolest bit of your painting. Let's see. There. Kind of pointy, pointy, pointy. All right. I am going to put a little bit more of that brighter pink on there without any of the blue in it. And then I'm going to grab a small brush. This is just a round Royal and Langnickel number four. Um, again, it's an inexpensive brush. I've had it for a long time and it is trying to come apart. I have a little bit of this bright yellow here.
lilies have this sort of open flat center bit that sometimes has like little 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 dots around it I think I'm going to put a couple of those just because you won't see much back there just want a little spark nothing back there um, Make that a little orange. The mixing with the permanent yellow deep. Grab a little bit of white, spark in. Oh yeah, there we go. A little bit of white, tiny little taps. Actually, I'm, all right. So what I'm gonna do is add with this brush, let's see. Just a little bit of lighter petals coming out around the front. A little bit of white. A little bit of pink in the water. Some of that might be reflecting underneath. A little pink in the water. Oh, that just makes me happy. I am going to sort of smooth out a couple of these lily pads. I'm going to try not to do too much, you know. There we go. But you can just soften this in, kind of glaze. A little bit of extra color here and there. Make it have a little bit more variation here and there. Maybe decide that there's a couple spots where you really want it to be darker. Underneath some petals. On the lily pad. Make it your own, have fun, don't get too stressed, you know. Like I said, this is a fun, sh just a fun little thing to do. And it's an abstract, so nobody can tell you you did it wrong. Don't let anybody tell you that your vision isn't the right vision, because you know what? Your vision is exactly right for your painting. So however it turns out, if it's the way you wanted it, it's right. And that is my soapbox that I'm going to stand on. Nobody can tell me my painting is wrong because they don't know what's inside my head. I think this is really cool. The only thing that I'm a little bit, I don't really like how that green that I put on there just went. Didn't like it. Cover it up. <laughs> Grab a little bit of another color. Boop, boop. Brighten up those petals that are in the front a little bit or dark, deepen them up. I can sit here and play with this forever and ever and ever, but I think for us to move on to another painting and another day, this is done. I'm going to sign it, maybe just a little bit of the white and pink together. And yes, I do see the blob of water that I dropped. 
And there we go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, painting a little water lily pond. I hope that you enjoyed this. Make sure to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends. Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those you love. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.